Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome to this video on the HTC Vive Pro Performance on the Alienware 17 R4 uh, G with the GTX 1080 card. And if you're looking to buy a new gaming laptop or like me and have purchased a new gaming laptop within the last year or so, when new games and peripherals come out, you know, a year or two later, as fast as technology changes, it's like, did my investment, is it obsolete already or not? So that was one of the things I was uh, curious about with the updated resolution. Is the HTC Vive Pro functional or just as good or better um, on from a laptop performance level? Now, I'll preface this by saying that there are a number of use cases for VR and people use VR for different things. I'm going to be, from my perspective, I'm kind of leaning toward, for those of you that want a portable room scale uh, experience. So with that said, this here is a picture of my two options from a portable VR setup. I've got the uh, lighthouses on tripods here. And but either if you get the Vipro bundle or the regular Vive bundle, they're going to come uh, with the mount kits. Not the tripods, but for example, I have the mount kits on my ceiling in my basement uh, where the lighthouses are usually, but for the portable, I just uh, unscrew them and then uh, plug them into the tripods here. And uh, it's real quick and easy. Um, so it's nice for a portability standpoint. Tripods I got on Amazon and I can put a link in the description if you want those. But to the left here, I have the original HTC Vive headset, and I don't have the deluxe audio strap, but if you want to distribute the weight a little better, if that's an issue for you, you can always get that. Uh, but I have the TPCast wireless adapter for it. So uh, on top of the headset here, you have a receiver, transmitter, and then which is connected to this battery that then connects to um, this little pouch that you use a clip-on belt um, to keep behind you and then uh, you've got the TP cast breakout box if you will so it's got a USB and HDMI that go to your laptop and then there's also the router for the wireless transmission and the instructions that come with it are based on pretty much if you don't know anything about networking um, you don't actually have to have your internet go through there. What I'll usually do is have my wireless on for the laptop for the internet, and all you just need is one RJ45 cable to plug in to the Ethernet um, port on the laptop to one of the LAN ports on the TPCast, and that's it. You don't actually have to connect it to the internet for it to function. And then on the right, of course, is the HTC Vive Pro headset with the new breakout box that has a proprietary connection uh, to the headset. And then you've got your USB and the mini display port. And that's another thing. The headset does come with a mini display port to display port. Uh, cable, which I haven't used. I actually had to purchase separately a mini display port to mini display port to work with the laptop. So that's one thing to keep in mind if you are planning on use it with your laptop, be sure that you have um, a mini display port to mini display port. So as far as performance, does it work? Well, at the end of this video, I have a couple of screenshots, one with the HTC Vive Pro you playing uh, some clips playing the Magic's Tale with the graphics turned up and uh, you can see it runs really smooth and looks really good. So from an overall you know frame rate and resolution standpoint it's uh, top notch. It works great. But there's some pros and cons that, that re and the reason why I want to bring up I looked up the current prices of some of these things where I think it's going to be, um, could have an impact on your decision if this headset is right for you. So for there are potentially um, there's potentially two cons, um, and I'll just get those out of the way. So here we have uh, my very crass drawing <laughs> of the lenses, and where the green circle is, everything inside that green circle, which is just a small circle, if your eyes are lined up perfectly, that's your sweet spot. That's where everything's like particular, particularly with text. It's going to look crystal clear, looks, every, anything in that section looks awesome. Uh, 
I haven't really noticed that much of a difference as far as the um, screen door effect goes. I mean, it's, I guess, technically less, but I still um, see it either one if I'm looking for it. But generally, when it comes to, you know, gameplay, I, if I'm not focused on it, I don't really notice it that much. So there's really no difference there. But the main thing is where these little red lines are, that's where you're going to get a lot of those God rays effects. So particularly when there's black screen and white text, if you're looking in that, you know, tiny hole, everything's okay. But as it starts to scroll and it gets outside of that green box, then you're going to get different bands of, you know, uh, God ray effects. And that's the same on the... HTC Vive, the original headset, and, and the thing is, when you're when you're playing games, if you're moving around and the headset headset shifts a little bit, the qu overall quality and experience to me is identical to the original headset. There's really not that much, uh, from an immersion standpoint, that much different uh, at all. So I was kind of surprised by that. So for me, like I say, with the game, in most of the games that I play, don't use text, and even if I do it's very minuscule i mean because it gets blurry or get the god rays in the way outside of that green circle area so when it comes to immersion is the visual uh more intrusive like having that uh you know slightly clearer spot does that make a big difference or is removing the cable having a wireless experience where you don't have to worry about the coiling more immersive and for me I have found that the wire I've been using wireless for so long that now that I've switched now that I got the new headset and switched back to a wired um, and even though it's a single wire instead of the three like on the original um, I find like I, I have to relearn eventually it gets to muscle memory like breathing you know you don't have to think about it but when you first get into VR and you're dealing with that cable you know you're tangling yourself or tripping and you know, or I'll, uh, like if you're bowling, I'll sometimes, you know, get my arm caught when I'm, you know, not paying, not realizing where the cable is, where that's 100% eliminated with uh, wireless. So when I'm taking my laptop somewhere to show friends or family, um, or even at work, for example, um, if they've never used VR for the first time, I don't think they're going to notice a difference with that center clarity as much opposed to if they're able to freely roam around because with the chaperone system you've got your box and as long as you're in the stay within the box you're good you can spin around as much as you want not worry about the cable and to me that's a more of a immersion uh, immersive experience and when you look at the premium prices this is why I want to break down the this is why I want to break down the prices to um, just give you something to think about here so if you go with the original Vive bundle that comes with the lighthouses, the controllers, and the headset, you're looking at $499. Optionally, if you get the deluxe audio uh, head strap, that's another $99.99. That's going to give you the more back support and the built-in earphones. And then if you want to go all on wireless, you get the TPCast wireless adapter, which runs $299. So you're spending a total of $897.99 plus taxes and whatnot, shipping maybe. So that's kind of your base price to have a full room scale portable experience with wireless. Now, if you go with the Vive, Preds, uh, Vive Pro headset alone, you're looking at $799 right now, and they have a bundle that's $1,100 currently. They are coming out with a wireless, but this is why I said wireless support because it's designed for desktops. Uh, it comes, the last I've seen, unless they're gonna be making a change, uh, there's a PCIe Express card that controls the wireless. Well, laptops don't have PCIe Express ports because um, they're, that's a, something that's on desktop motherboards, not laptops. So, and my main use case for, you know, full immersion is to, you know, have a wireless headset. So I guess, you know, I've overall, I've been disappointed with the visual fidelity uh, for the price and the potential that 
it may not support wireless, which I'm hoping they change that. But as of now, that's not the case. So again, that's just something to think about. You know, eight ninety seven ninety nine for the full wireless uh, package, or eleven hundred dollars with no wireless. And I also heard they're coming out with a generation two of the lighthouses and controllers, and this is also coming with the first generation two. So that's kind of another thing to consider. And so to wrap this up, I'm also going to show you a couple of gameplay videos. First one is some clips from the Magic's Tale, and I just wanted to show you this picture here because with this game there are some parts where you turn around but you can see that w even with the single uh, cord it will still coil up on you and you can see it starts to coil up and this is a game where I wasn't spinning around that much and when I was it's was rather slow then the second uh, gameplay video is going to be of raw data where I'm using the original headset but with the wireless and with that one and also with full locomotion so I'm not teleporting I'm it's full on like first person shooter running around spinning around you know turn around doing everything but wirelessly so is like i say as long as you stay in the the guardian or you know chaperone uh box that you uh create when you set up your vive uh you're good to go there's and i haven't had any you know breaks uh it it also depends keep in mind with that is also your play area and your line of sight because that's uh, it's very sensitive to latency but from my experience I have not had any issues and I've been able to set it up and that's why I in, the, in these examples I set this up in my garage so instead of having it in my normal play area it's a I've never actually played in my garage before but the point was I wanted to uh, set it up in a location like if I you know, take it to a friend's house where you can just set it up and, you know, see what kind of performance you get. So I hope this was informative for you. And as you'll see, the the graphics on high and the frame rate is, you know, butter smooth. So there's no performance issues. It just comes down to is the value and cost of the headset worth it for you with the pros and cons that I had mentioned. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. The site of the attack. Now, uh, this is not the site of the attack. I, ah, uh, I went off course. If only the Master's friends were here. They'd know what to do. Sadly, I've no way to reach them. So I'm stuck with you. Ah, uh, the Master is doomed. to exact There. Now hurl your fireball at the boards to burn them down.
See? Even you can do it. Now hit it again. And now the barriers have faded. Hmm. This is some trick of that sorcerer's. I'm sure of it. Trapping us in with his minions so we can't run. Diabolical. You need it, you stone-hearted killer, you. But I found a health potion here. You can drink it now, or you can stick it on your hip for later. To drink it, raise it to your lips. And so I drank, to bring it down. But not enough could I consume. 
I feared the tide would be my doom. Now, thanks to you, I'm saved from death. You end my grief. I draw a breath. seemingly infallible death traps. It's infuriating! <laughs> Keep an eye out. We're getting closer to where we were ambushed. would be so much easier if you could just levitate like me. What was that? It shook the whole place! Dearest Maeve, the perpetrators must be the Fatherites. They seem bent on the total... Sorry about this. This is not 
kind of reception I'd expect from Eden Corp. Intruder or not, this is excessive. Here we go. Ah! Damn it, I lost control. Put on me, Yoru. Giga Kyo, Kaisi Spot. Airborne countermeasures activated. Watch out for flying drones. Security breach. Security breach. Commencing factory operation oh. shutdown. started working here. Does that seem right to you? scary right now for AI though. I have this friend who left his job without having another lined up. Now he's stuck, you know? Because no one wants to hire you if you're unemployed, right? Oh, 
questions, please do not hesitate to contact our Investor Relations Department. We're getting out of here. If there is any way that I may be of service, please do not hesitate to ask. It has been my pleasure to make your acquaintance. Please take me with you. Let's go.